Oh, that's a little too close for comfort. I guess uh, drinking and using power tools doesn't always work. <laughs> hey, everybody, what's happening? Sammy the Thrifty Brewer coming at you, and happy Homebrew Wednesday for Wednesday, February 26th, 2014. Um, and everybody, say hello to Spencer. Spencer, say hello to everybody. Come here, boy. Come, come. There's my boy. So, I've been away for about a month or so, apart from the nasty video that appeared, I don't know who posted it, uh, last week. That involved me, a uh, shed, some booze, and uh, the odd paint can. Yeah, I had a bit of a riot with that. Um, I was, yeah, working on the STC 1000. Okay, off you get, buddy, off you get. Down, 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 down. Working on the STC 1000, which you can see right there. Um, and I won't give you guys a close-up on that yet because I'm going to go a little bit further into the fermentation chamber in another video because it's not totally done. Um, outside's done, door's on, it's insulated. I got to do add a little bit of a add a lot add a compartment ah, la, 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 la. <coughs> add a compartment for the ice because it's going to be an ice chill uh, sort of like a swamp chamber, swamp cooler dealio, um, but with frozen uh, two liter pop bottles um, and a computer fan. It's currently holding at 19.7, uh, and my heat source is actually a paint can with a 50 watt bulb inside, hooked up to the STC. Um, it hasn't come on in quite a while, which is great. Like I said, my basement temperature is it's somewhat constant. It ranges anywhere between 18 to 21 um, in the winter time, um, but also, and then in the summertime goes ranges between 18 to uh, 25, 26, really dependent on the weather. So I am really wanted to put it together, more or less to clean up the bench and, you know, um, have a, a, a constant temperature for my brews. Um, so it's going to double as a fermentation chamber, also as an aging chamber as well. I do also have some spots um, off to the side here that are significantly cooler um, that stay relatively constant below, uh, between like 65, 70 degrees Fahrenheit whatever that is in Celsius, I think that's like 20 to, but I don't know, um, for for cellaring and whatnot. But the problem is that I'm in there all the time and I kind of want to give a spot to put the beers and put them away and let them age. Um, and that's working out quite well. So uh, the inside's all done. I just have to do the uh, ice chamber compartment. Uh, the fans and temperature rollers hooked up, heat sources in there, shelves are there. I've done test fits with carboys. I can fit basically once I get the ice chamber in there. I'll be able to do two carboys for sure. Three, maybe, maybe, but definitely room in there for some one-gallon carboys um, for for test batches and stuff. So I want to give a big thanks out to my wife for that because she made it happen. Well, I asked and I started and she just agreed. Um, but yeah, 80 bucks to put the whole whack load together because I had a load of uh, two by fours here and I had a whack load of scrap lumber around that was uh, for the frame and the sides and the bottom. Um, insulation was like 40 bucks and trim and everything else was like 40 bucks. Maybe the heat source was like 20. So let's say 80. Let's say 100 bones in. And the STC was 27. So 120, 130. It's going up, isn't it? Yeah, $130. So thrifty, yes. As thrifty as I could have made it, no. But I'm happy with the results. I still have to paint it. Um, I'm going to do chalkboard paint on this panel here on the inside on the inside of the front door there so I can record um, because I love chalkboard paint. That's what's on uh, Jezebel here. Um, so I can record you know, what I've got fermenting, when it went in, what the starting gravity was. Um, also what I've got aging in there on the top shelf, bottom shelf, because I used to do a lot of labeling, but I just found it very time consuming. Um, so now it's just basically, it's a letter and number code to let me know what it is. So that'll correspond to what's written down on the door to make life simpler. Because life's difficult enough, so we might as well make it simple. Um, I want to apologize for the flickering and everything because these bloody fluorescent lights are killing me. Um, they're on and off, but um, I'm very happy that with this you notice I'm not doing it on the iPhone right now. I picked up a new webcam because I have got approval from the treasurer, Mrs. Thrifty, to pick up a new power supply for my desktop. So, stoked about that. I picked up a Corsair RM750, and this thing is mint. I did have a 750 
um, power supply before which cacked after about two and a half three years this one's awesome it's fully modular which is great you only have to plug in with the plugs that you're going to use and it has silent fan technology the fan only kicks on when it needs it um, if it's noticing more than a 50 percent load on the power supply um, also if it's noticing uh, extreme temperature build up within the case itself so I'm just going to show you a quick pop I'm going to put the camera off here flip her around and this is the little gem that I'm talking about um, yeah the inside of the case is a bit of a mess right now um, it's dusty I've got to reroute the wires and uh, do the whole cable routing thing and clean things up put the covers back on but it's been running steady for um, you know three three four days when I do that last Thursday so basically just over a week it's been running nice so I'm gonna root this cable back here and the cool thing about this webcam I picked it up for like 40 bones uh, it's normally normally about 70 so it was on sale so I made them a thrifty deal and they went for it um, it's uh, Microsoft uh, Mi Microsoft life cam uh, which is in 720p which is well above what I had with the uh, with the iPad or the i with the iPhone, so I'll still be doing the iPhone. I want to do like some mobile stuff and farting around like uh, in the shed from the intro there. Um, that was a bit of a close call. Almost lost a couple digits, but we didn't. So cheers to that. Um, this is my red ale that I did. This is a brewer's best kit, basically extract, specialty grains, and hops. I think we we're on Willamette hops with this bad boy. I think. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember. But I've been doing a lot of these kits lately. Um, they're not super cheap. I mean, they're 50 bucks for the kit, which gives you everything. It's giving you your yeast, and it's usually coming in with like uh, like a nice USO5 or a USO4 or Nottingham Ale yeast. Um, no Cooper's yeast. Um, it's giving you all your extract, all your specialty grains, your hops. Um, it also gives you 50 bottle caps. So I've got a bottle cap. I've probably got well over like. 250 300 bottle caps that I'll be slowly working my way through so it's for me it's too cold to brew outside with all grain um, you know, minus 27 this morning I was like oh dear lord so um, on the brewing front I will be putting together a uh, chocolate vanilla stout uh, this week and I want to give a thanks out to gash slug for the idea on that mate he put up a YouTube video about uh, a coffee and vanilla infused stout with a Cooper's kit. So this is another brewer's best kit. Um, it's actually an Irish stout kit, but we're going to do four ounces of cocoa nibs uh, with the last 10 minutes of the boil, plus a full vanilla bean at the last 10 minutes, and then we are going to uh, steep some vanilla in some whiskey, because I don't have any vodka, and I want to put a bit of a Canadian spin on it, so a little bit of Canadian uh, Canada Club 10-year-old uh, uh, rye whiskey, which I'm going to soak it in that, and that'll be added to secondary. Um, and then it'll let sit and get happy and hopefully I'll be able to pull it off in time for St. Patrick's Day Which is the 17th of March, I believe so I'll be cutting it close If we do we do if we don't we don't then also gonna brew a cream ale up real quick Which I've done before in the past and I love that kid. It's awesome. It's all extract and it's just simple super super easy um, The plan is to get back into all grain again in the spring once this white stuff outside disappears and uh, Hopefully we'll be able to do that shortly um because I do have a full-size keg that I really want to give a big thanks out to my good mate Tommy Moore who I've known for a coon's age, known him forever. I um, was able to cut the top off, I'll do more updates on that as I move further along with that project. But that is going to be, my plan is a fully electric single kettle uh, brew in the bag vessel. So that is with a pump and that is with a uh, valve on the bottom, valve on the top for whirlpooling and doing a sparge, like I brew in the bag sparge where I heat the water up to 170 and sparge over my uh, whirlpool it over my brew in the bag. And then, uh, yeah, so the heating, heating element, uh, we're going with the mash pump and the two spigots and I'm hoping it works out because I'm thinking it will. And my idea is to sort of keep it somewhat simple um, and then eventually if I need to, if I down the road, if I choose to go into like a Hermes system or a three barrel system, I can. So that's the plan for that. But I figure the idea long term is to go all electric and get this up and running. So that means I gotta bring an electrician in, which is good because I know a lot of them and they like to work for beer and bring me in some 220 on this back wall because I'd like to be able to brew inside whenever I can. Then I gotta work on ventilation and clear that with the wife. Maybe just start it and ask for forgiveness after because it's easier to ask for forgiveness 
than permission. We all know it, we've all said it, and it's true. Um, so that's what's new on the brewing front in terms of uh, what I've been doing downstairs, monkeying about, uh, brewing beer, making a fermentation chamber, putting drywall up over here, to finish in the basement slightly. Uh, eventually we'll get some tile on the brew bench. <laughs> Gamer's throwing me off. Tile on the brew bench here, some drywall on the back wall, and go from there. Um, but bigger news, I've thrown my hat in the ring to be the Canadian hub for the 2014 SJ Poor Homebrew Challenge. I am so excited. I'm very much looking forward to uh, working with these group of guys and working with everybody in this lovely, wicked global community. I'm stoked. So cheers to everybody. Cheers to SJ Poor and everybody else. Those of you in Canada who want to participate in the 2014 SJ Poor Homebrew Challenge, contact me at thriftybrewer at gmail.com. So that's thriftybrewer, all one word, at gmail.com. And we'll get the ball rolling and we'll see if we can represent Canada. I'd like to have, uh, you know, more than just me participating. Um, those of you in Europe, uh, contact Tony Yates. Uh, Australia is uh, tiny. And then we've got in New Zealand, it's Paul Wicksteed. And then in the UK, it's Harry Brew, 69. And then uh, we have Kevin Clements, I think, on the East Coast. So Kevin Clements is on the West Coast in the US. And then obviously SJ Poor on the East Coast for the US. Um, and if I got those names wrong, lads, I apologize. But I will put information down below in the comment section of the YouTube video. Um, so yeah, that's really about all that I have. Uh, Apologize, I've been away for about a month or so. Family first, all that jazz. But 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 I explained it all in my drunken shed ramblings. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna sit back. I'm gonna enjoy the last glass of this beer. Well, the last amount of this beer in this glass. Might have another more. Might have another more. Might have one more. Sounds like it's time for another eh, full. And to further that, I want to thank, personally, I want to thank Harry and I want to thank Tom for their all of their efforts on putting together the Midnight Brew Session on Uvu and Vaughn Live last Friday. I laughed my ass off. I logged in from work at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Vaughn Live and sort of hid in the corner and did my thing and worked and left and came back in and worked and did my thing there and chuckled. And came back home, robbed a crap load of bandwidth off my wife and kids. So much so that the Apple TV wouldn't work. <laughs> Which led to a very interesting discussion about bandwidth, bandwidth allocation and me throttling the router downstairs so that I could have a little bit more than they could. But they didn't know I could do that, but I happened to let it slip in my drunken stupor. Damn it. It happens. Secrets we keep to ourselves and tricks we keep to ourselves. Sometimes they fall out and they slip out and it happens. Mm. Needless to say, we will be increasing our bandwidth at the Thrifty Brewer household uh, next spring, once they can dig up the cable line. <laughs> it's buried under about 14 feet of snow right now, which is good. So that'll be 15. Me or sorry, uh, 10 mega, 10, uh, 10 megabyte download time, which is 10 megabyte download time. Currently, we're at 600 kilobytes here. That'll be a drastic increase. Um, yeah, awesome time, guys. Uh, met up with some guys who I haven't I haven't had the opportunity to talk with. Tiny, we chatted, had a riot. Paul was able to chat with you on Uvu and uh, Norfolk Hillbilly and Zippy and Jonah and all the lads from over there. You had me in fucking stitches. I was dying. It was a great time. Very much looking forward to that happening again. Um, Paul brought up a good point and Tiny brought up a good point about doing a 24-hour brew day and doing brewing and mashing by time zones globally. Sounds very daunting, but I think we can pull it off. I think it's a great idea. Um, also, about bringing the community a little bit closer together, I want to give a big shout out to East Mountain Brewing. He is the man. He's uh, been brewing. I think he's got like a. Th How many videos do you have up here? He's got a few videos up here. Um, I just want to go back here and click that. that knocked me out. He's got about. Uh, I don't know how many vids he's got up. He's got a few. 
Um, fellow Canadian. He's uh, got into home brewing fairly recently, and uh, he's doing some good stuff. So you should go by and check him out. East Mountain Homebrew. Good lad. Uh, he's about two hours south of me, and uh, I think he's in uh, Hamilton. I think he's in Hamilton. Based on the name, he's got to be in Hamilton, I would think. Uh, but yeah, no, great lad. Um, wanted to be part of the uh, the Great Canadian Beer Exchange, which is mint, and that will happen. Um, I know... Uh, Jason Toes, um, uh, Brett from Newfound Brewing, and uh, East Mountain Home Brew. We were chatting about uh, doing a, a Great Canadian Beer Exchange. Um, it will happen. I think the whole Estee Poor World Home Brew thing may take up a little bit of my time, but it will happen, guys, I promise. I know Brett's moving up to Calgary, and we had talked about, uh, I was chatting with him today, um, getting that stuff mailed out to him uh, mid-March. So, mid-March... You know, we can look at mid March, we can look at beginning of the summer, but it will happen, guys. I do promise. I've got a year. Still have your email at, still have your addresses, and it will happen. Um, it's just a matter of when. Just look at it. Uh, just wait for the email. You can wait by your email every day, going <gasps> tracking number, <gasps> tracking number, <gasps> tracking number. No, it it it'll be a surprise. It'll show up, and there's Spencer saying hello again, my little boy. Oh. So yeah, um, yeah. So here's to the 2014 SJ Poor World Homebrew Challenge. Cheers to that. I will do my best to be your Canadian hub. Um, those of you who want to get in contact with me, w, or sorry, thriftybrewer at gmail.com. Send me the particulars. And when I have the information, I'll pass along to you guys. So I'm going to go feed the dog because he's apparently a little hungry. And uh, we'll talk to everybody soon. Take care. And I want to thank you all personally so much for liking, subscribing, and watching my videos. Like I've said many times in the past, um, there's a lot of time that's required to watch these things and I really thank you guys for taking the 15-20 minutes out of your day and uh, you know liking and subscribing uh, so thanks so much take care um, and all the best and by all means keep calm and brew on everybody cheers and the Spence you want a little sippy? Want a little sippy bubble? no? I don't know. bad for dogs good for people keep calm and brew on everybody cheers